Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to show you all how to find the area between two curves using technology. So we have the function f of x and g of x here. And the first thing we should do is graph these. So we'll just type this in. You've got natural log of x minus 1. And we close the parentheses and we got plus 5 outside. And then the second function is g of x equals x plus 2. So we'll go ahead and graph these two. And the first one is a, a natural log curve, and the second one is a linear function, and they intersect in quadrant one. So one thing that you could do to make the rest of this easier is make the x minimum zero, leave the x maximum 10, and we could adjust the window for the y values to go from y minimum zero to y max 10. And what this does is it'll put all the focus in quadrant one where everything is happening. So a zoomed in picture here shows us what our graph looks like. Now for the actual question, what we're trying to find in this is the area between these two curves. So there's a few things that we have to know. For one, is that the concept for finding area involves cross sections and the cross section for area on the xy plane is a rectangle. In the x direction here, this is like representing like an infinitely like thin rectangle, like super, super thin. So we call that little horizontal distance delta x, which just represents a small change in x. And then the height, we need this concept over here. So this is if you forget the formulas. Let's say I was looking at a height of 7, and then I put 5 here. If I ask the question, how far away are these two numbers? Like pretty much all the students when I ask this will just say, oh yeah, two, obviously. But the concept that we want to use for this is the other way of finding two, aside from counting the boxes, is to do the number on top minus the number on bottom. So then here for this question, the blue function on top is f of x and the red function on bottom is g of x. So then when I want to model this cross section, this is going to be the function on top f of x minus g of x. So then where we go from here is that the area of one of these rectangles represents a small slice of the area. So if we call this entire region, if we name it A, like we let A represent the area of the region, then delta A or dA represents just one slice. And from this cross section, the area of a rectangle is base times height allows us to say that the area is f of x minus g of x times dx. So then if I want to find the area of the entire thing, a few other things I have to know is where does this thing begin? Where does region A begin? Like let's say where is A on the x-axis and we're doing lowercase a. And then where is this thing ending? So we'll call that lowercase b. So then the area represents the sum of all of these rectangles. It's kind of like a Riemann sum concept, but it's the sum of all these infinitely small rectangles starting from A and ending at B. So we write that on both sides. And on the left side, that's just going to give us the area A is equal to the integral from A to B of f of x minus g of x dx. And we'll just throw an extra set of parentheses here. All right, so now the technology part. Now that we have everything set up, what we absolutely need to know here is the value for A and the value for B. And the way we're going to find that is we're going to trace the intersection point. So we hit second, trace, number five is for intersection. And we're going to scroll to the first intersection point first. So we go, so let's scroll a little more. So it looks like this is the best location. So we're a little bit before that intersection. We hit enter once. We scroll to the right. So you see how like we're before and after the intersection. Now we hit enter a second time. We hit enter a third time and you get the coordinate for X, which represents our A value. But a, a nice trick for the calculator, if you press second mode to quit the screen and then you press store, you could store the answer. So the answer was this decimal here. You could store that as the letter A. So we press alpha math and we could store it as the letter A. So now anytime I write the letter A, this is going to come up. 
And now for the other intersection point, second trace five, we do that again. And same idea, hit enter before the point of intersection, scroll after the intersection point, hit enter a second time, hit enter a third time, and this is our B value. So we're gonna quit this screen, and we press store, and now we're gonna store this answer as second apps, where that's the letter B. So what we'll do, uh, just so we have everything organized, we're only gonna write the A value and B value once. So we got 1.1585934, and then B is equal to, we have 4.14, I'm just gonna write the rest of this. 6193221. So now anytime I write A and B, I'm defining them here, I don't have to write them again. This integral now represents this function f of x in blue and this function g of x in red, and then a and b represent these values defined. So the rest is gonna be all calculator work. I can now say a equals, and then the shortcut to typing all of this in the calculator, press math nine to pull up the integral. And now when I write alpha math, that's gonna put the lowercase a, and it's gonna record the value that we have here. We hit the up arrow, we press alpha apps to get the letter B, and that's going to write the second value here for A and B. And then for this part, notice we're doing f of x minus g of x, but f of x in blue represents our y1. So this is another cool shortcut. If you press VARS, hit the right arrow, go to function, hit enter, and hit enter once more on y1. Now y1, the calculator is going to read as natural log x minus one plus five. And we press minus VARS again, but this time around when we go to the function, we're gonna enter Y2, because Y2 represents G of X. G of X here is in red, is X plus two. And the last thing you need to do is just put delta X, because our functions are in terms of X. And then when you press enter here, let it load, we round to the nearest thousands place, we get 1.949. For some reason on the AP test, they prefer if you round it three decimal places. That's what I've seen pretty much every year I've looked at that exam. So the area of this region is going to be 1.949 units. Okay, this is going to conclude this video on finding the area between curves. If you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe below. And if you have any requests, leave it in the comment section. Thank you for watching.